this Christmas Eve. It is good to have all of you here with us tonight and a special welcome to any visitors who have chosen this as their church home for this evening. I invite you to turn to your bulletin and, uh, and join me with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the maker of heaven and earth, the Word made flesh, the Lord and giver of life. Amen. Let us come into the light of Christ, confessing our need for God's mercy. God of peace, we confess that we are not at peace with others or with ourselves. We bring to you all that tears us apart, discord in our families, violence in our world, our own conflicted hearts. In your mercy, commend us. Reconnect us to one another and to you. Let peace reign over all the earth. Through the Prince of Peace, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the word who has come to dwell with us, God has given us grace upon grace. Forgiveness that is stronger than our sins. Love that can heal every broken heart. Hear this word of God's pardon and peace. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, you are free from all your sins. Rise, shine, for your light has come. Amen. As able, please rise for our entrance hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful.
be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wait to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors, and all the garments rolled in blood, shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
second le lesson is from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly, worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord.
hate to bring this to your attention tonight, but it probably really wasn't a silent night. The night that the baby Jesus was born in Bethlehem was probably rather chaotic, probably rather noisy. And as we dig deeper into this birth text, maybe you'll understand why. Caesar Augustus, the Roman emperor at the time, had decreed that everyone needed to return to their home towns in order to be registered for the census, which made you eligible and accountable for paying taxes, all right? And um, even though not everyone returned to their hometowns at exactly the, on exactly the same day, things were just different in that part of the Roman Empire. Things, people were just always on the roads going to their homes, their hometowns, and, and there was just a lot of commotion, a lot of hustle and bustle, and things were kind of jam-packed on these, on these winding roads between the mountains. And Mary and Joseph had to take the long route also. They went from the little town of Nazareth, which was about the size of Pigeon Falls, nine days south to Bethlehem, which again was about the size of Pigeon Falls, to Bethlehem, the city of David, Joseph's hometown. In the fullness of Mary's pregnancy, it couldn't have been an easy or fun trip. And as they approach Bethlehem, you could hear all the noise and the hustle and bustle. Because this little town, which is just four miles outside of Jerusalem, was truly bursting at the seams. For those of you who live like in York or Northfield or Pigeon Falls, when you have a big family reunion or a big get-together or big, big to-dos, you know how the town feels different. It's different. And there's all kinds of excitement. And there's lots of campfires in this case going on too, to be sources of light, to cook food, and um, to keep warm. There are throngs of people with their livestock filling the streets. The conversations were loud as relatives greeted one another and in the same breath complained about what Caesar Augustus was up to. Children are probably laughing and running around in and out of the crowds excited to be with their cousins. And amidst all this commotion, the Roman soldiers made their presence known in order to keep the Pax Romana, the Roman peace. It was not a silent night. And it is into this situation that we find no room for Mary and Joseph as they are about to give birth to their child. All the spare rooms in their relatives' homes had been taken. But there was a home that had a spot in the adjoining stable for them, which was probably a really good place to be, because it was out of the major commotion. It was okay. And so fresh hay was provided, a midwife found, a birthing stool put into place, and the delivery room was ready. The animals made a background chorus, shall we say, uh, that was the music to the birth pains and the wails of a woman in labor. Lest I remind you, birthing rooms do not usually depict a silent night. It is into this organized chaos, into this frenzy of a forced family reunion based on a Roman decree, that the baby Jesus is born. It is into this commotion of everyday life with so much happening in every direction that the Savior of the world, God in the flesh, is born for you 
and for me. The commotion of everyday life. Do any of you feel that at times? Huh? The commotion of everyday life. Sometimes even I myself feel like day after day is kind of just stuck on fast forward. Okay? I think we get this. But then all of a sudden something happens and everything around you just seems to stand still. That what is happening to you at that very moment is so important that you do not even hear other noise around you. You are oblivious to any other activity that is going on around you. Because nothing else matters than what is happening right here and right now to you. Everything else around you stops. The current theatrical term for that is called freeze frame. Freeze frame. The spotlight, if you will, just centers on the baby and Mary and Joseph. Nothing else moves. The sounds are put on mute. Action stops. All is calm. And all is bright at the moment in time when this baby is born. Swaddled in cloth and cradled in his mother's arms. Nothing else matters. God is born in the flesh to us, a Savior, Emmanuel, God with us. I think we're all here tonight to get just a piece of a silent night. A break from the normal commotion that happens in our lives, that happens beyond the walls of this building. A time of freeze frame, if you will, in which nothing else matters but our focus on the birth of Jesus Christ. Everything else in your life can be put on hold until you get a chance to really take in the birth of Jesus and ponder what it means to you in your life. Jesus, born to save you from yourself and also from the sins of other people. Jesus, born to give you eternal life and eternal life for all of those people who believe in him. The good news is that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, always has and always will break into the messiness of our world, into our not-so-silent nights with a message of hope and promise. The message of hope and promise that in and through him absolutely all things are possible. The message of hope and promise that all will be well, but not perfect. Christ never promises perfection. The promise and hope that sins really will be forgiven. Promise and hope that new chances and new life are a daily gift of God's pure mercy and grace. And so tonight we carve out a little space in our busy lives. Our lives that are filled with so many distractions that pull us in so many ways to focus on the holy. To focus on what really matters. Jesus Christ, the light of the world, born for you and for me. Emmanuel, God with us, now and forevermore. Amen.
104 in the very front of your hymnal, and to get together we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in your glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of the life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us enter into our time of prayer. Rejoicing in the light of Christ that shines upon us, we pray for the church, the world, and all according to their needs. God of glory, fill our hearts with the joy of this night. Stir your church in every place to join the angels' song, praising you for your birth among us and your presence within us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The seas thunder, the fields rejoice, and the trees shout for joy at your coming. Renew the earth and all its creatures to declare your praise, Lord, in your mercy. Scatter the bitterness of hatred and fear, that all people seek your peace on earth and work to establish goodwill among the nations, Lord, in your mercy. Shine your healing light on those who are alone and long for companionship, those who are rejected, weak, troubled, or sick. Lord, in your mercy. Free us from our preoccupation with what has been. Relieve our fears of what may come. Assure us that we live in the light of your unfailing compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you know our needs even before we ask. We ask that you hear now the prayers that we lift to you silently from our 